dirt guys came in and did a great job of, uh, of cleaning up the dam, cutting the side excavation, and uh, they also put in a, a driveway. We were ooing and ahhing about what to do underneath the trees in terms of the site cut, whether we were going to put in a, a retaining wall underneath the trees or uh, just do a, uh, do a cut and, um, uh, and try and landscape it. And we decided against the retaining wall purely because of cost. We just decided to do what was the, um, the lowest cost option. So in this case, it was just a cut. After the dirt guys came uh, and went, the plan was to get the shed guys in and get the frame up but what happened unfortunately was around that time the uh the rain started so we hadn't had rain for months and then all of a sudden we got these um torrential downpours that essentially turned the uh, job site into a into a mud pit so we had to then scramble around and sort of have a look at what we can do to try and remove some of the water off the job site to allow the guys to get their machinery in to do what they needed to do because with the shed guys uh, these are the types of uh, jobs that if you miss your window to uh, to get the job done due to weather events then you could be waiting weeks to months to get them back again the decision was made that we just have to suck it up and incur the additional expense that the uh, the rain had created for us and we brought in some rock uh, 2040 i think it was for memory rock to to put down and, and give better drainage and better traction for the machines also still had issue with the uh, the fact that we needed a, a couple of 20 ton cranes to come in so um, we uh, we also put down some brick to um, to prepare for that because we've still got a mountain of bricks here that we inherited from um, uh, the previous owner that was we just grabbed some of that rubble and put it down because uh, even the amount of crushed rock that we had down for the smaller machines wasn't going to cut it. That was uh, an interesting stage getting that ready and having the confidence to bring in the, cr the, the cranes. So yeah, the, the boys had slowly assembled the roof on the um, on the ground and uh, we were getting ready to, to lift. So when the cranes come in, it probably took about two, three hours to to get them ready, to get all the uh, the safety things sorted out, make sure that the, um, that the cables were all at the right length and uniform so that both cranes were going to be working together, not against each other. And um, it was amazing to watch. It like, took, uh, yeah, like I said, a few hours to get things ready, but when they lifted it, it was done in about two minutes. Like it was, it was really impressive to watch. And um, then, uh, yeah, the boys had to whiz around and uh, just drop the, uh, the poles on top of the, the footings and, and bolt them up with a bit of uh, gentle persuasion in, in some areas because that's uh, quite a big structure and um, you know, you're needing to get it to a, a relatively small tolerance to get these bolts in and uh, yeah it was um, very very impressive to uh, impressive to watch also with the uh, with the roof um, being that you know it's not only going to be the guys walking around on top as they install it but also uh, in time our guys you know myself if we've got to get up there and clean gutters and, and do whatever we opted to put in some um, uh, some insulation as well as some safety mesh so that uh, there's yeah you just you don't want to be sort of walking up this sort of higher roof and, and have uh, have fear about falling through the roof without any sort of mechanisms uh, to protect you. Well, once the frame went up, the next stage is uh, to get the um, get the skins on. And um, wow, did that happen quick. Uh, that's where you sort of really start noticing the progress is, is you sort of come up and another section's done day by day. And um, when you st when the skin started going up and you could actually perceptually just see the, you know, the, the, the actual size and shape without seeing through um, the structure and then um, yeah the guys just kept uh, kept chipping away and and um, yeah I was a very happy relieved boy at that point let's have a look at the uh, the shed drainage so we're using this property for, for aquaculture we're going to be doing um, native fish and uh, aquatic plants and help our customers supply them with, with uh, yeah, fish and plants. So water is obviously crucial for that operation and, and we don't want to run out during dry periods. Now, the shed itself has got a massive surface area. Well, I think it's massive, but um, uh, it's about 770 odd square metres. So that's a fair amount of rain that's going to come down. So we've got the luxury of having a, a good natural slope on this property. So it means that we are going to utilise the um, uh, utilise the, the slope and, and try and direct water into places that it's going to be needed both now and, and for future proofing it as well because we only want to try and do this once and that's the goal is to set it up once and think about it and get it in, in there, um, get it right first go. Hopefully we do but time will tell.
And this is also uh, the property I think I've mentioned before has got a, an unusual situation where you've got a dam essentially up the top of the hill. So when we were building the shed I was trying to think about how we can utilise the existing infrastructure and not have to fill it in and try and regenerate the dam so that it could actually be used for uh, for good purpose. So what we thought we'd do to utilise the dam is to first of all direct all of the water into the shed from the main part of the roof. The roof itself you've got the main part of the shed and that's got um, two sizable down pipes, 150 mil from memory, and the then you've got the canopy out the front and that's got its own separate drainage that um, uh, that goes to the other side of the of the shed and then we've got the the lean-to section which is the smaller a uh, smaller section that also has its own drainage um, off that. So essentially we've got four pipes that, are, uh, that we're needing to, to catch water from. So we said let's get the drainage pipes on this side of the shed. We're going to redirect that water straight into the dam. But what we're also doing is we're going to have uh, the ability through knife valves, to, which are just simply valves that, that you can pull up and down and um, shut off water going from one direction to another. So we're going to put a knife valve at the dam, which will enable us to shut water, uh, allow water to go in or not, uh, depending on when the rain comes down uh, into the dam. And then also we're sending it down the hill to these uh, a spot down there where we're going to put these uh, aquaculture tanks that are basically modular tanks that we can build uh, hold about 30 odd thousand litres the ones that we're looking at and we're going to test those to uh, see how they perform both for water holding and also then for um, uh, potential fish stocking and then eventually in time we'll get a, a larger dam down the bottom uh, that will then uh, enable water to be held up here if we need it send it down there to where the main fish setup's going to be also the house water tanks down there so that'll be a, a backup as well and then eventually if all of those things are full then we can direct water down into the um, uh, into the larger dam or otherwise just uh, out into the paddock. Uh, the dam I've also decided I was ooing and ahhing about should we line that, should we not line that, let's see if it holds water. It seems to be holding water reasonably well, it's very very muddy um, as is, is, is common with a, a lot of dams, this soil profile being such high clay content uh, is, is causing the dam to, to become muddy. But um, I think I've decided I'm going to line it because we want to use this dam for a, a test facility. But uh, yeah, it's going to make, make more sense to have that water as clean as we can. We can flock this water and we probably will just as a bit of a, uh, an educational video. But we'll also do a, a bit of a video with, um, with how to line the dam using a PDM liner. But um, I think having it lined in this particular instance, even though... Uh, it may not necessarily need it from a water holding capability. We want the water as clean as we can get it, so a line is going to um, allow us to do that, so that will be the plan. But uh, yeah, so now the shed's at the, at the stage where the, uh, the shed guys are essentially done. We've now got to get some, some garage doors in, get some concrete down. After we get that, we've got to look at power and start getting things, uh, getting things functional for, um, uh, for use.